Experiments conducted in poor test conditions are not reliable ways of gauging any form of reality. There are many spiritualists who claim to have science backing up their beliefs, including paranormal organisations who claim to bring forward evidence. I've mentioned before the Skoll experiment, and despite some interesting results from the various seances which took place, the test conditions were poor, they were looking for results, and missed a great many things. But it's interesting to note that in controlled conditions, you simply don't get the same results. There's also the case of Marcelo Bassi. Using an old radio, he seems to get messages from the dead. And Victor Zamet has covered this issue. And despite the claims of such people, the evidence is lacking. Organisations that don't provide proper controlled conditions seem to get results whereas those which have actual scientific conditions don't seem to achieve anything special. Without rigorous testing in controlled conditions, we cannot say that this is a genuine phenomena. The predictions of Edgar Cayce, a man who made so many predictions that inevitably many would come true. However, many of them are so bizarre and so unrealistic and so poorly based in reality that many of them will never come true. But of course, many people can make them fit, or suggest they fit, or somehow lead them into a kind of half-truth. Very much like people have been doing with the work of Nostradamus for centuries. A modern-day equivalent is the psychic twins. But there are so many people who make predictions, either claiming some kind of spiritual, psychic insight, or some other method. And of course, it comes down to making so many predictions and so many general predictions, that many of them will come true. When it comes down to predictions in controlled conditions, they're rarely of any great insight, and typically are quite general. There are also mystical devices, like the Manifestation Cube. A small, metal cube, with patterns which look quite artistic, and some kind of device on the inside. This device has not been tested scientifically. Yet the manufacturer claims that this device can change your life and they're willing to charge you for that privilege. Prices range from $1,000 to $20,000. The idea is that the mechanism is meant to work in a way which allows you to activate certain positive attractions in your life and thus bring about the desired effects. However, you may well be buying a very expensive paperweight which has no positive value whatsoever, other than the psychological benefit of belief. Another manufacturer has come up with Shambhala healing tools. Many of these items, including pendants and pendulums, are a metal coiled crystal with two magnets or more on the sides. The man who designed them, claiming to be the Buddha, claims to bring forward enlightened knowledge of how to create these devices. He claims the devices are specially calibrated to remove negativity and promote enlightenment. So really what you have is highly expensive costume jewellery with untestable claims. Without testability, we cannot be sure that the thing is true. You don't make a thing factually correct or a science by simply asserting an idea. You don't make a thing scientifically tested by performing tests only in certain conditions. Only by having controlled conditions and tests repeated can you confirm what the actual phenomena is. By having proper controls, you root out the errors, the deceptions, and the potential for misunderstanding. And even with good test conditions, errors can take place. Yes, by determination and repetition, you can determine the most likely explanations for your results.